Brad, what is your message to the RNC and DNC? Well, my first message is really that this should have never really become a partisan issue. I think all of us should embrace, embrace technical innovation. And these are technologies that truly can transform the, the cost and efficiency of financial transactions particularly. And so uh, our message is really that we as an industry want to be regulated. We want to have the clarity of that regulation. And it's been refreshing to see uh, the Republican Party kind of lean into that as part of their platform. You've definitely seen uh, crypto move towards President Trump. Um, why? What is the Biden administration doing that's so wrong that crypto guys don't like it? Well, I think the primary thing that has happened is, you know, it, five years ago, I was out publicly saying that there wasn't clarity in the rules and the rules of the road. And five years later, after Ripple was sued by the United States SEC, we still don't have clarity in those rules of the road. And so you, you have in the this administration, uh, in Chair Gensler, the chairman of the United States Security Exchange Commission, really a fight between the SEC and to some degree the CFTC about who is the regulator of consequence. And Chair Gensler has taken the position that kind of everything is a, uh, what he calls a digital security or something like that. Judges have ruled against him repeatedly. Uh, but this administration has kind of continued that fight uh, against the industry. What's your conversations that you're having right now with the existing administration? I mean, you reference uh, those, some of those lawsuits. And of course, I, I think it was uh, last July uh, where you at least had that partial victory uh, in that case. And ultimately, uh, more or less, that worked out in your favor, uh, depending on all, all the legal avenues here. But we talk about uh, an administration that actually seems to now have pulled back. Maybe they got the message. But what conversations are you having with them about the structure of regulations, how they may morph and how they may change going forward? Yeah, I was actually in Washington, D.C. last Wednesday as part of a crypto roundtable hosted by Rep Khanna, uh, but attended by Senator Gillibrand as well as Anita Dunn from the White House. And it was, I think, the Democrats realizing that they've kind of gotten behind where the Republican Party and the Republican platform has been as it relates to crypto. And I think they were there listening to the industry. Mark Cuban was one of the, the hosts of that event also. And so I think it was re refreshing to start to have that conversation. But as you referenced, this is almost exactly a one-year anniversary of the, the court case where Ripple uh, was sued by the government. And look, the, the one thing that the, that the SEC was arguing most vociferously was this idea that XRP, the digital asset that Ripple uses in our technology, was a security. And that was really what they cared about. And what the judge ruled is that XRP is not a security. And that's really been a, a formative case for the, the industry. So we're going to continue really clamoring and champ, trying to champion the, the clarity of regulation. And yeah. I'm, I'm hopeful that as a, uh, we see a changing of the guard, we'll see that. Sorry, just to clarify, though, I mean, was the ruling, though, it didn't make a distinction between institutional investors and retail investors, did it not? What it said actually is that just like if you package up real estate or you package up uh, even pork bellies, if you put those into an investment contract, the investment contract is a security. Gotcha. But okay. the, the ruling was very clear that no matter what, XRP in and of itself is not a security. Brad, do you agree then with, okay, so the, the reason why in part that President Trump is pro-crypto is because he doesn't want China to be more crypto than the U.S. Is that actually like a material risk that China would surpass the U.S. in terms of its uh, crypto innovation? Well, I, I can't speak to China specifically, but what we are seeing is whether it's the U.K., Japan, Singapore, I mean, even the European Union, more than two dozen countries have come together to create a framework to provide crypto regulation. They call it MICA. And what's, what's frustrating as a U.S. company and someone who grew up here in the Midwest it, it's frustrating that we as a country can't get that rules, the, the framework in place. And instead, we have this interminable litigation coming from the SEC that really isn't solving the problem. Well, we went to court and spent over $150 million in three years of our time arguing that in the court and prevailed. We can't do that with every single token. And so we have been advocating, and there is legislative momentum, uh, both on the Democratic and Republican side of the House. Uh, something passed the House just recently mm -hmm. called the Fit 21 Act. Uh, the, the Senate is considering various bills. And certainly with the uh, choice of J.D. Vance as a vice presidential candidate, he personally has uh, put forth language, a uh, draft language for a bill that the Senate may or may not consider. So it's less about the, the daylight between the regulation of the two parties, and it's more just about Gary Gensler. 
Well, certainly Gary Gensler, in my judgment, has been, he has been at war with crypto. That is for, for certain. But it's also, a, I think, a tone from the overall uh, Biden administration. The OCC certainly has been anti-crypto. You're seeing other elements that, of the banking industry really take a kind of an anti-crypto point of view, which hasn't, uh, I don't think, served us well. And to Romaine's question earlier, I think, you know, we as a country have benefited immensely from being the heart and center of the internet. The internet really grew up here in part because we had clear regulatory dynamics in the United States passed in the late 90s. That allowed entrepreneurs to build, that allowed capital to flow in. And I think we ha we've been you know, seeking that as other countries around the world have leaned into that and provided that clarity. And you know, you're seeing entrepreneurs and capital in this industry flow into other countries instead of the United States. I am curious, though, uh, Brad, too, when we talk about uh, the regulatory aspects of it, and I understand the, the policy platform that Trump and, to a certain extent, that J.D. Vance has started to articulate uh, since he got uh, nominated, uh, named a VP candidate. But we also know that a lot of the objections to, uh, let's just say, the growth of the crypto space was not just coming from the White House directly. There were concerns raised by the Fed. Uh, there were concerns raised by the Treasury. Uh, agencies that, to a certain extent, will have a certain degree of autonomy from anything that comes out of the White House, no matter who is sitting there in the Oval Office. Yeah, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. I, I think that, look, look, what we are seeing and what we are seeking is clear rules of the road. The vast majority of people I know in the crypto industry are good actors who want to follow the rules. We, we've been asking for clear rules. And I think, in as uh, Alex described earlier, in, in Chair Gensler, instead of saying, let's, let's codify that, let's sit down, they keep hiring more lawyers to bring more lawsuits. And again, it's just a silly way to approach regulation through enforcement is not the best way to yeah. a, approach this problem. And that's why we've been working with people on, the, on Capitol Hill. And again, on both yeah. sides of the aisle, it just happens to be this became partisan for maybe good and bad reasons, and you're seeing the Republicans kind of lean into it more so than the Democrats. We only have about 30 seconds left, Brad, but I am curious here about your relationship with the SEC. Are you in settlement talks at all with the agency right now? You know, I can't comment on that specifically. Uh, suffice it to say that the ruling has been clear from the judge. There's one final piece, as you uh, referenced, about these investment contracts that are sold to institutions. We expect resolution very soon, but can't predict exactly when the judge will, uh, will rule there.